Uh, what happened to my ambience? And why am I not missing it? <laughs> well, what's going on, guys? My name is Mana Mega, and welcome back to Let's Play Sub Machine. This time, we're going to be tackling Sub Machine Three: The Loop. And uh, this this bitch of music here tells me we're going to have a good time. So uh, let, let's have ourselves a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. There's no diary page. There is no menu. There is no... Wait, no spoon? Oh, that means I'm getting a spork, right? I'm, I'm getting that spork I wanted. <laughs> In fact... Nothing to collect at all. What about my spork? I don't care about just me and the machine. I want my spork. Bullshit! <laughs> we collected that right there. <laughs> Alright, so, welcome to Submachine 3, The Loop. Now, what we just picked up there is a bit of... Oh, it, oh there you go. It's a navigator. Um, now, this is a very, very different game. Probably the most different in the entire series. Um, pretty much, we have an infinite amount of looping rooms. That navigator there tells us which room we're in based on, uh, well, our XY coordinates. You can keep going as long as you want. You're not going to find an end. So, uh, let's, uh, let, let's head on back because, uh, the, the endless void is scary. <laughs> now, back in zero, 0 you'll always find this thing here. This will take you on to the next... Well, this game kind of has levels to it. Um, uh, but first thing I wanted to mention is that, um, new for the HD version of this game that you won't find in the, um, online version, which, uh, I don't think you didn't really get any updates. Um, there is some stuff for us here, and the, uh, online free version you can play, you can't actually move out of this very starting room. You have to press this button here, but in this version, not only can you move, we have some notes here that weren't here before. Let's have a look. You said to mark this paper every time I pass it. Oh, Lord. Um. Yeah, that's creepy. Uh, over this way. The rooms reset every other cycle. The compass will reappear soon. If only I know which cycle I'm in. Um, yeah, so remember when I said, in the, in, like, endless loop? I meant endless loop. Never stroll away from the center. Never. I had a companion once. She said she wanted to check how far do these rooms go. I've never seen her again. Infinite loop. This doesn't end. I've been here before. I remember these damn looping rooms. If I could only remember what that was all about. Some machine unlocking further connections, a compass showing me coordinates. Yes, it was all about coordinates. There's no compass in here now. What to do? Well, the best thing for us to do is to ignore any curiosity to explore this place because honestly, that curiosity has been overridden by fear. <laughs> but yeah, these notes here are um, new additions for the HD release. So if you click the link in the description and play the free online version yourself, you can't see these. So, uh, sorry, but they're kind of creepy, so maybe you don't want to. Anyway, let's progress. <laughs> All right. Now, every level has a password, and you can enter this password on the title screen to pretty much just jump to that level. And what I mean by levels, well, every time you press this center button here, you are greeted with some kind of puzzle that you need to um, solve in order to keep moving on. This map here will always be at coordinate 1, 0, just to the right of the central room, and will pretty much give you an idea of what's here for you, just where your objectives are. So this one's really simple. All we need to do is flip all the switches um, in those positions around the center. Just remember that this X is the center room, that's zero, zero, and the dots are always your objectives. All right, so let's move on to level two. Bamita. Ah, right. oh, this one. Now, this one I didn't quite get at first, but uh, this one's actually rather simple. Flip one of these switches here, and it will give you a number. 
It should be obvious, but apparently it wasn't obvious enough to me when I first played this game. That's not a number. Those are coordinates. So we want to go to coordinates 1, 3. And uh, yeah. keep in mind that these work off X and Y coordinates. So the first number is your X. That's your horizontal. The second number is your Y. This is your vertical. So 1, 3. Now go to 2, 1. And these will be random every single time. 4, 5... I believe these don't go beyond um, the fifth row and column, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Five, four. Simple enough. One, one. Back down this way. Oh, back to this one. <laughs> I've only really ever had this happen a few times in all my years of playing this game. Actually, uh, going back over um, one we've already done. And now five, one. Now that we've done that, the thing is open and we can move ahead. Firoga. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of Firaga. As in the Final Fantasy 3rd tier fire, fire spell. <laughs> anyway. Alright, so to the three above and below. Ah, this one. So, basically, in each of these corners, you have this panel with four numbers. And for each one, you have six buttons, which move one particular number... Um, up or down. You need to make all of these match to a certain combination of numbers. Now, because there's only three numbers we can change, it's obvious that um, one of these numbers is a constant and that's what needs to match on all of these. There's a very simple trick to knowing what these are. The numbers are... Basically, whatever position the room is in, that number is the constant. So, the constant in this room is 2. For this one, it is five. Two, five. This one is one. And seven. Two, five, one, seven. Whoops. One, seven. And we got it. So that turns green when you got that. Pretty simple to figure out if you know that little trick. And after you've done two in a row, pull that switch, and there's a third one. As you can see, the um, six lights that indicate whether or not you can move on. What was it? 2517. Okay. 2517. Alright, and we're done. So yeah, very, very different um, compared to every other game in the series. Winda. Is, uh, every other is a point-and-click puzzle adventure game. This is really just a point-and-click puzzle game. It's uh, very obvious that it's just gone with the puzzles here. So these ones are a bit more spread out. So for this one, we have these uh, these little turny switches here. And each one has a number of dots with them. We need to flip all these switches in order from 1 to 6. So 1 is up here. And we just saw 2, I think. Yep, right there. 3... Uh... Four was this one? Yep. Five is over this way. And six. Now, you may be wondering that with my memory as horrible as it is, how did I do actually an alright job there? I'm actually better at remembering these kind of patterns than I do a lot of other things. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Let's move on. Banda! Namco Banda. Something like that. Okay. Alright, so for these ones here, we got these panels with letters on them. We want to make these letters... Well, translate the letters to numbers and then have them match the coordinates you're at. So, if A equals 1 and B equals 2 and so on and so forth. So, for 1, 2, we want it to be A, B. Alright. Uh, moving on to the side here. I think I was... Yep. So for this one, 3, 1 would be C, A. And you get the picture. E, A for that one. Why do you guys love money so much? <laughs> uh, well, I guess I can't complain too much. I don't play that many games published by EA. <laughs> B, D. And last one. D, E. Alrighty. 
Now we can move on to the next level. Mjolma. Now, I believe all these passwords are actually um, actual Polish words. Not that I know what any of them mean, but I believe that's what it is, because um, Matthew Skutnik, the creator of the series, is himself Polish. So, yeah. So these ones are a bit spread out as well. So what do we got? Ah, okay. So we have a symbol and a number. So we want to remember what those are. Now, the other one this way was out here. Which is three. So two was a line, two dots. Three was two lines and one dot. And over to the left of the central room, we have this. We want to have those symbols match whatever number they were with. So... Well, the one we passed was the one for three, so where's... There it is. There we are. Alright, so I should keep going diagonally from here. Five is... An upside down Y. One is R. It's literally an R. <laughs> There we go. Four is... It's a foot of some... It's a bird's foot. And six is R as well. And, well, a bird's foot or a peace symbol without the circle. Well, the peace symbol's upside down, isn't it? No, I can't remember. <laughs> Right, and we need to press the button when we're done. All those go green, that means we've got it right, and we can move on. Slitter. Um, hmm. I don't feel like making a joke for that one. <laughs> Might be a bit too, uh, bloody. Alright, so we have a thing here. I'm gonna switch here. If we actually go down to uh, zero, negative one, flip the switch, and this is a projector. Okay, so in the online version, you can actually, these are actually more clear. They're very blurry here, but you can still kind of see them. Um, they're rectangles with um, diagonal lines going through them in different directions. So we've got a backslash, a forward slash, backslash, forward slash, forward slash, backslash. So, I'll just memorize them as where the top of the slash hits. So, left, right, left, right, right, left. We go back down to here, and across from here, you have this little thing. Close one direction of these, and two lights light up, and they correlate to those um, slashes. So, so, the vertical ones is the backslash, the horizontal ones are the forward slash. So, left, right. Left, right, right, left. Now we can go back to that switch we saw before next to the projector. And got them all right. So now we can move on. Flinter. Yeah. Alright. So now we have these strange little things. At 1-1, one, one, negative 2-1, and 1, negative 2. So these coordinates are pretty easy to remember. And we have this machine here, which we can actually input those same coordinates. Flip that switch, and this thing is open. Two switches inside, and that's two lights for us. So this one's fairly simple. Uh, we'll go negative two, one next this time. That's that one done. And one, negative two. Alrighty, so we heard that open up, we're good to go. Anilcar! I can't think of good jokes for these. <laughs> Don't know why. Ah, uh, so that map is out. Alright, what we got? Oh, okay. Alright, so we have two sets of panels here. One with Roman numerals, one with, well, numbers. Now, I believe in the online one you can play now, it will be letters and colors. So, those letters will correlate to a color. They'll be the first letter of that color's name. 
and obviously this one, the numbers correlate to the Roman numerals. Now some of these are grayed out, meaning we can't change them, so those are the constants we need to keep in mind. So those are all twos, so that's easy. That was very easy. <laughs> Alright, so now we have five, six, and four. So let's go down and change them. Six and four. For the button, they all turn green when you got it right. We can move on. Botwinka! That just sounds funny. <laughs> uh, now, this one is a little bit different. We have the map here, but if we go to the other side, we have another map, which is blank. The puzzle for this one is actually to fill in this map with the same um, dots that this one does, because if you actually go to those coordinates, there's nothing there. So we've got two to the side and an L over here. And the switch for this is underneath the central room. We're good to go. Syntagma. Now this is actually the last puzzle. And we have uh, this note here. Read me. Have you noticed that with each solved puzzle you move deeper below the ground? The machine itself is a giant trap. In order to escape it, you must stop solving puzzles or you just remain perpetually in that loop. The loop is timeless, spaceless, without beginning nor end. It's the worst place you could have found yourself after teleporting from the lighthouse. Here's what I want you to do. Don't open the passage machine in room 00. Instead, look for a green leaf and bring it to the statue in room negative 12 9. This should disconnect you from the loop, and in which case you should arrive at the lab or somewhere nearby. Good luck, Mer. Ah, screw this guy, I want to solve the puzzle. <laughs> okay, now this is also something different um, for the HD release. These scribbles on the wall were not here in um, in the online version. But what we have here... Oh. Well, this puzzle is actually a little bit different um, than it was before. So, these scribbles here correlate to these... Uh, these meters. In the online version, um, these will actually be like full colors, which correlate to these letters we see here, which also correlate with these numbers. That's how many units we need to fill up these meters by. Here, obviously, they're monotone, and they're also mixed around, which this was like this in um, the original as well. So we need to keep that in mind and try to match up these meters to what colors they should be and the colors to these numbers. So, red, green, and white. Six, five, one. So red, all right, red and white are this one. So they will be six and one. Now these meters are six each, so. Three, four, six, all right. So six for red, one for white. And green is over on the other one, it's the third one which is five, so we should only have to go down one. All right, which leaves yellow, blue, and purple, which we'll see here, and uh, there's the leaf that Mo was talking about, but eh, I, I don't want it. Fuck that leaf. What's it done for me? <laughs> now it's yellow, so that needed five. Blue and purple, zero and two. All right. All right, that should just about do it. Now, on the uh, negative one Y plane, or well, negative one X plane, actually. No, Y plane. Yeah, Y plane. Put these two switches. We've got them both right. All right, we can continue on. I want to keep adventuring, okay? Just, yeah. Fuck what that guy said. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. This game has a bad ending. Solve that last puzzle, you keep going until you die of dehydration. It's, uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> Alright, so how's about we look at what uh, the good ending has to offer. And if you remember, for the last level, the puzzle was Syntagma. All right, so we need to find the green leaf and bring it to the statue in room negative 12, nine. Now, where is that leaf? There it is. All right. Again, complete bullshit. We, there was stuff to collect in this game. 
All right, move on up this away. All right, got well, the statue right here. Let's see where this takes us. You thought you could? I, I did escape. Thought you solved all the puzzles. Well, I did. Although in in one timeline I died. <laughs> but the truth is, you don't want to escape. Yes, I do. I don't want to die of dehydration. Can't tell me what to do from the submachine. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to escape from this series, it's a good series, but I want to escape from this loop because I, re I really don't feel like dying today. <laughs> also, can we talk about these rooms for a second? Like those ladders. It must be a pain in the ass to climb up different layers because you have to jump quite a height to reach those ladders. I'm just saying. <laughs> See you at the lab. And speaking of the lab, that is the subtitle for the next game in this series, Submachine 4. The lab, which is where I will see you guys next time in Let's Play Submachine. So, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, guys, my name is Matt Omega, and I'll see you guys later.